and welcome to St. John's uh, service uh, of Holy Eucharist. Uh, I'm just glad that you all are here. I'm grateful that uh, the technology is enabling us to come together and worship, and, um, and it's also enabling us to strengthen our bonds of mutual affection and connection with each other. So uh, after a little bit of silence, we'll begin our worship for the day. Okay, let's try this again. I am still grateful that the technology is working. Um, want to welcome everyone to Sunday Holy Eucharist here at St. John's and in your homes. And um, just so grateful for the rich worship uh, that we are doing all week long. Um, we had uh, almost 20 people uh, for morning prayer on Friday morning uh, in, in the Zoom call. And we're going to be uh, helping those of you who uh, have had a harder time connecting we're going to be helping you with that so that we can uh, connect more fully and regularly during this time of pandemic quarantine. After a moment, we'll begin our worship. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you've crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, 
everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed this message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together uh, Psalm 116 and the verses listed. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the Lord, O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Hallelujah. A reading from the first level of first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways you inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you shall come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine, genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not from perishable, but of imperishable seed. Through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Amen. 
Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and leaders, how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be contemned, condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So we, he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what happened on the road and, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our hearts to our good, uh, to convert our lives to our good, great good, and your great glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. These readings have such deep resonance for us today, this story of the walk to Emmaus, because in it, it has embedded deep, deep human experiences, like from 100,000 years before history, there are themes about walking home together, about sharing a meal, about having our eyes opened, 
There are so many deep spiritual aspects of this reading today. I want to focus on this business of walking home. In Luke's gospel, excuse me, Luke's gospel is structured around a travel narrative. And it is a travel narrative from, from Nazareth to Jerusalem. And all of the stories are constructed with Jerusalem as being that place which is the destination, where the redemption of humanity takes place. And the whole story in Luke is about a journey. A friend of mine, Mary Moore, has a beautiful expression uh, that describes what life is and also what the church is. And she, Mary says, we're just walking each other home. We'll have a conversation and something will come up about death or life or the birth of a baby. And Mary will look and smile and say, yeah, we're just walking each other home. Everyone knows what that experience is of walking home. For me, in my, in my adolescence, it was the low threshold date. You could ask the girl, could I walk you home? Do you, uh, you, can I carry your books? And it was also low threshold for girls because they could say, well, would you walk me home? And it was, it was a great way to spend time to get to know someone. You'd walk together. There was no pressure. Or I also remember times of walking home with my siblings after school, my sister Kathleen. The bus would let us out and we'd walk down a dirt road when we lived at the cabin for one year. And we'd walk, we'd walk together and talk about the day. There is something so resonant and human about the journey home. And that's what this story is about about a couple of folks who have been disappointed and confused and they don't know what to do except go home. But they're a little bit like those in the movie theater who leave uh, before the trailers have finished. Oftentimes uh, in movies you'll know that the the uh, the credits, excuse me, the credits will roll and everyone thinks it's done. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere pops the main character and, and or some scene and, and they act out a scene that all of a sudden makes some things make sense that hadn't made sense. And it's like a, um, I think they call them actually Easter eggs. Uh, in video games, there'll be things like that, that are surprises that sort of break, break that fourth wall uh, or third wall of television to engage us. These two have experienced a tremendous and shocking experience of violence, of tremendous disappointment, feeling betrayed, They are so sad. They are going home. There's nothing more to see. And like in Luke's travel log, it's as if they overshot the mark. They went through to Jerusalem with Jesus and they overshot the mark. And Jesus, being the loving God that he is, goes out to meet them and, and says, Oh, lads, the story's not over. It, it continues, it gets better. How mysterious, too, that they don't recognize him. And so Jesus walks them home, accepts their invitation. And in this fourfold action at the table, 
Jesus celebrates the very first Holy Eucharist. The Eucharist is that, as Ken and John would remind us, it is that amnetic uh, experience, that remembering experience in which Jesus says, do this for the remembrance of me. And what does Jesus do? He performs the first Eucharist. He takes the bread, just as we do. He blesses the bread. He breaks the bread and shares it. This indeed is the first Eucharistic meal. And I love the fact that Jesus disappears at the end. I'll, I'll tell you something that you may not have recognized. All through worship, you will see myself and the other vested servants will, uh, or the readers for that matter, will bow in front of the altar. And of course, what they're really doing is they're bowing to the reserved sacrament. Except when we leave. The one change I've instituted and I've insisted upon here is that we do not bow to the sacred uh, sacrament that is in reserve. And the reason that is, is because we have just consumed the body of Christ and therefore become the body of Christ. If we were to bow, we ought to bow to each other. And this is what happened in the meal. They took blessed, broke, shared it, and Jesus vanished because Jesus was in them. They no longer needed to look to Jesus. They were carrying Jesus. And like you, perhaps you've heard in love stories, that the purpose of love, of romantic love, is not to simply gaze in each other's eyes for eternity. It is actually to walk through life on a journey, looking out together, seeing the same things, responding to that which we see. We, Im we imbibe God so that we can become God's hands and feet in the world on our own journey. It is maybe hard to talk about journeys in a time of pandemic quarantine. A number of, a number of folks in the parish had planned journeys that had to be canceled as a result of that. And I'm sure many of you at home might be able to relate to that. And there's also the, the shadow of death that is cast over everything. And what I would say is that in fact, we are journeying together, walking each other home. And this is not ultimately our home. We are not, and we were not created for this place and this time and this existence only. We were created for a heavenly country of coming together closer to God. And I witnessed a part of that journey this week. As many of you know, uh, Jenny Ferguson uh, died this week. She'd been in the hospital for a good long time after, after taking a bad fall. She had been in a family, in, in, in a, uh, a, a family home uh, being cared for. Um, and the end came. And it came, and it came quickly. And one of the gifts that came in the midst of this is that she was taken out of the hospital, and a, and a room was made available for her at the hospice center, the Evergreen Hospice Center. And the deal is, those folks right now who are dying in the hospital are dying not in, the company of, not in the company of family, but in the company of strangers, of, of nurses and doctors and janitors, because family are not allowed to spend more than a 15 minute visit toward the very end. And the gift that was received this week, and it was fully re received by the Ferguson family, was the opportunity to come together and to dwell 
and to spend time with Ginny and to share stories and to pray with her and to pray over her. It was an opportunity to walk her home. And like a nursery, it became a kind of midwifing into the next realm, the next existence. And so for us, particularly in the Easter season, we proclaim that death is not the end, that the journey home continues through this life, as precious as it is, and into the next. And in it, we join all of our ancestors. And together, together, we walk home. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and we'll affirm the faith that is in us in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she has worshiped and glorified she has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Gregory, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. We pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the well being of all people. We pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for those in need or trouble, especially Georgette, Ruth, Michael, Annalise, Allie, 
Eden, Carol, Lana, Lisa, Bay, Paul, Janina, Tom Ryan, John, the Roth family, the Varon family, Lupe, Angie, Fred, Joni, Tom Ryan, Michelle, Nathan, Ryan, John, Demetrius, April, and Linda. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. We pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. We pray for all those who have died and especially Gary Wilkes and Jenny Ferguson. Please offer your prayers and thanksgivings now, either aloud or in silence. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. We pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, you give us the gift of prayer. Shine your light upon those who have no one to pray for them. All who have lost the heart to pray and any the, of whose faith has ebbed away or never found a home in you. Make our lives a prayer of compassion that raises up the downtrodden, searches for your wisdom, and opens to us the imitation of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you. You, I can kiss. I know. Thank you. <laughs> peace, Alex. Brother, peace be with you. Mm -hmm. Peace be with you, holy woman of God. Alrighty. Let us now with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
is Deacon Missy's Sunday off, and, and um, boy, I miss her. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him 
being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sanctified for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on this journey of faith, you are welcome to God's table to receive the bread and wine made holy. I'll commune us afterwards. No, we can't use that. Yeah, that's okay. Receive what you are. Susan, receive what you are. Please stand for the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food 
of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. So go in peace with Cleopas and the unnamed disciple and all of our ancestors in peace to follow the good road. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. I'll have you come on up here, Connie, and we'll do the dismissal from here. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace we've received today is not ours alone. Let us go forth in the knowledge that God shall surely call us to be the answer to another's prayer. We will with God's help. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. I'll follow you out. <laughs>